After Jesus has returned, his thousand year reign will begin, with the building of the temple of God. This unique temple, was described by the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 41. And it will be from here, that Christ the King will rule all nations. And all the nations will come to this temple to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Word of God made flesh, the Messiah. Isaiah 2 verse 2 In the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. and will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it and many peoples will come and say come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us concerning his ways and that we may walk in his paths for the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord, from Jerusalem. And he will judge between the nations, and will render decisions. Isaiah 9 verse 6 For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Revelation 27 And when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. Revelation 20, verse 8. And he will go out, to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog, and Magog, to gather them together, to battle. The number of them, is of the sand, of the sea. Revelation 20, verse 9. And they went up, over the breadth of the earth, and circled around the camp of the saints, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God, out of heaven, and devoured them.
and the devil, who deceived them, was cast, into the lake, of fire and brimstone, where the beast, and the false prophet were. and he will be tormented, day and night, forever and ever. Revelation 20, verse 11 And I saw a great, white throne. And him, that sat on it, from whose face, the earth, and the heaven fled away. And there was found, no place for them, Revelation 20, verse 12 And I saw the dead Small and great Stand before Jesus And the books were opened And another book was opened which is, the book, of life. And the dead were judged, out of those things, which were written in the books, according, to their works. Revelation 20, verse 13. And the sea, gave up the dead, which were in it, and death and hell, delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Revelation 20, verse 14. And death and hell, were cast into the lake, of fire. This, is the second death. Revelation 20, verse 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, will have their part in the lake burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death.
And I saw, a new heaven, and a new earth. For the first heaven, and the first earth, were passed away, and there was, no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared, as a bride. And I heard a great voice, out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be, his people, and God himself, shall be with them, and be their God. And God, shall wipe away, all tears, from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things, are passed, away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true, and faithful. And he said to me, It is done, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who thirst, I will give of the fountain, of the water of life, freely, he, overcomes, will inherit all things, and I will be, his God, and he will be, my son. And he carried me away, in the spirit, to a great and high mountain, and showed me, that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven, from God, having the glory of God, and its light, was like a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and, it had a great, and high wall, with twelve gates, and on the gates, were twelve angels, and having names inscribed, which are the names, of the twelve tribes, of the sons of Israel. And the wall of the city, had twelve foundations, and in them, were the names of the twelve apostles, of the Lamb. and the twelve gates, with twelve pearls, respectively, each one of the gates, was one pearl, and the street of the city, was pure gold, as transparent glass, the river of the water of life, sparkling like crystal, and coming from the throne of God, and of the Lamb, and flowing down the middle, of the city street. On each side of the river, was the tree of life, which bears fruits, twelve times a year, once each month, and its leaves, are for the healing, of the nations. And the city had no need, of the sun, nor of the moon, that they might shine in it. For the glory of God, illuminated it, and its lamp is the Lamb. And the nations, of those who are saved, will walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth, bring their glory and honor, into it. But nothing that is impure, will enter the city, nor anyone who does shameful things, or tells lies. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of the Living, will enter the city. The throne of God, and of the Lamb, shall be in it. 
and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face. Listen, says Jesus, I am coming soon. I will bring my rewards with me to give to each one according to what he has done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Happy are those who wash their robes clean and so have the right to eat the fruits from the tree of life. And to go through the gates into the city. My friend have you heard the gospel of salvation? Your eternity, will depend upon the choices which you make in this life. The Bible is God's word, to mankind. And the Bible says, that without being saved, we will not share in the kingdom, which God has prepared. Who is Jesus Christ? The Bible says, that he, is the word of God. He, was that part of God, which brought all things into existence, by his words. He, is the source of life itself. And he was that part of God, sent down to earth. To be born as the only perfect man, able to restore us. From our sinful nature. John 1, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not even one thing came into being, that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Is there any other way to be saved? Except through Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 11 to 12. And this is the record that God has given to us everlasting life, and this life, is in his Son. He who has the Son, has life. He who does not have the Son of God, does not, have life. So God is very clear, that only in Jesus can we find this, eternal life. Because Jesus is the source of life. In John 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, but by me. Once again, the Bible is very clear, that no one, will get to heaven, except by coming through Jesus. Why? Because, he is physically the eternal, living, word of God, which came down from heaven, to be born as a human being. He did not say, I know the way to heaven. He said, I am, the way. He did not say, I know the truth. He said I am, truth itself. He did not say, I know, where you can find life eternal. He said I am, life. So, for us to say that Jesus was just, an ordinary man, is not possible, because, he claimed to be the very source of life. According to Romans 5 verse 8, God demonstrated his love for us, through the death of his son on the cross. Why did Christ have to die for us? Because scripture declares all men to be sinful. And Jesus was the only perfect sacrifice, able to pay for all of mankind's sin. To sin, means to miss the mark. The Bible declares in Romans 3, 23, that, all have sinned, and fall short, of the glory, the perfect holiness and standard, of God. In other words, because of our sin, we are unable to reach the standard needed, for us to live in the presence, of a perfect God. Our sin has separated us from God, and because God is perfect in holiness, he cannot dwell in the presence of sin, because he is righteous and full of justice. He has no choice, but to judge the sins which man has committed. It's not possible for him, just to overlook, our sins. 
for them. He would have to deny his very nature. Therefore, according to God, sin must be paid for. We ourselves know this. It is the very reason we have a court system. If sin did not exist, there would be no need for courts and judges. And it's because of sins that we convict and send people to jail. But we ourselves are not innocent of sin. And this is the reason that we all one day stand before God, the righteous judge, and have to account for our sins. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And what is the price that we would have to pay for our sins on the day we are judged? The Bible says, Romans 6, 23, For the wages or payment of sin is death. This death is eternal separation from God in hell. Yes my friend, it is a terrible price to pay. The price is death. Death is separation from life, and seeing that God is the source of life. To be dead means to be separated from God. Jesus said in Luke 13 verse 5. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So then, the question becomes, how can I receive eternal life? Which is only found in Jesus, so that I don't perish in hell. How can I be saved from the day of judgment? When God judges my sin, some try to earn heaven by good deeds. But this is like trying to bribe the judge to overlook the fact that you are guilty. The fact that you did good works does not get rid of that fact that you are a sinner and guilty of the crime of sin. So then, if there is nothing that we can do to save ourselves, what hope is there of escaping hell? The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But, it goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift, so that no one can boast about it. Yes my friend, salvation is not earned by good works. It is given as a gift from God, a gift of grace. Grace is something that you don't deserve. But God is kind enough to give it to you anyway. And that gift of grace was his son Jesus. Jesus came to take our place and the sentence of death meant for us. He took our death and instead gave us the eternal life within himself. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us. In that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus said in John 3 verse 14, Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the Bible declares, that if we believe what Christ, did for us on the cross, we will be given Christ's, ever, lasting life. John 3, verse 16 says, For God, so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world, to condemn the world but so that the world might be saved through him. He who believes on him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. When the angel Gabriel declared to Joseph the name of the child to be born to Mary, he declared this child's very purpose for being born in Matthew 1 verse 21, the angel says, You shall call his name, Yeshua, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. You see, in the name given to Jesus, 
was his very purpose for being born, to save people from their sins. Which is why Yeshua, means Yahweh saves. And Romans 10, 13 says. For, whosoever, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall, be saved. My friend, the name of the Lord, is Yeshua, and it's the only name given to men, whereby, we must, be saved. Romans 10, verse 9 to 10. That, if you will confess, with your mouth, that Yeshua, is Lord, and shall believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, man believeth, unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made, unto salvation. Is there salvation, in any other? No, my friend, there is no other way. Jesus said, I am, the way. Because he is the only one to bear the penalty, for our sins, on the cross. He is the one who paid, the price, the price of death. He is the one, who was sent to hell, taking our place. But God, raised him from the dead, because death, could not hold him, and he, is the one who ascended up on high, to take his place at the right hand of the Father, from where he will return, not as Saviour, but this time, as the Judge, of the world. My friend, will you be found guilty, when you stand, before, God? There is only one way, to get right with him, and that way, is to accept God's gift of salvation, through his son's sacrifice. On the cross, it is a terrible thing, to have to stand before God, and be found guilty. If you have never confessed Jesus, as your Lord, or called upon him, for salvation, I hope, that you will pray this prayer with me, today. My Father, I confess Yeshua Jesus, as my Lord, and my Savior. Thank you, for sending him to die, on the cross, for my sins. I believe, that you raised him from the dead, and that he is coming back as King, to judge the world. My Father, I, repent, please, forgive me, of all my sins. Come, into my heart, and give me, everlasting life. In the name, of your Son, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. If you had said this prayer, and decided to turn from your life of sin, and follow Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah, then you have become a child of God. Please go and find, a born again Christian church, where you can have, fellowship with other believers. Thank you for listening. I pray, with all my heart, that you too, may experience, the love of God.